All right, AP Stat, we are going to talk about chapter 11, which is going to focus on simulations. And now you'll have a little bit better understanding of how we random not randomize the for our experiment. So we're going to talk about understanding randomness and why we need it a little bit more. So the first thing we need to talk about is what is a simulation exactly? Well, as the name implies, we simulate a random outcome to model a situation. Why would we want to do that? For two basic reasons. Either we're unable to carry out the original experiment, and we've already talked about what experiments look like, or we just simply don't want to carry out the original experiment for whatever reason. Keep in mind that when you're setting up an experiment and you're uh, making a plan to keep everything as equal with your participants as possible and you're assigning them treatments randomly, it takes a lot of resources and time and money. And sometimes those resources are not available to us, so we need to simulate what an outcome of an experiment might look like. So what is the first thing we want to do in a simulation? The first thing you have to do is read your situation and just be careful and pay attention. This is something that um, a lot of you struggle with because you're so used to reading stuff and just glossing over things that are important. It is very important that you read for understanding all of these problems because there's information that is going to help you set up your simulation. So how are we going to model our situations? What is that going to look like? Well, since um, the process for doing this is so important because again, we're modeling a situation, we're not carrying out an experiment itself, we are simulating that experiment. So the process or set of instructions that we need to devise needs to be very clear and easy to, um, to follow. So what is that gonna look like? Well, I'm gonna give you a detailed description of that as we work through some examples. But you need to understand a basic, um, a basic idea here. When you're writing your description, you need to include enough detail that I could read it and carry it out, all right? So another statistician, if they could come in and read your uh, description, they could carry it out. That means there can't be any missing pieces like, well, what do we do if this happens? What do we do if this happens? You have to explain and give enough detail so that those questions don't come up. Those questions are just automatically answered in your details. So keep in mind that the set of instructions those are instructions that you would carry out for any single trial. So you need to understand that the instructions for the trial are not the trials themselves because you could run 100 trials, but you're gonna run each of them the same with the same set of instructions. So you need to pay attention to that. Now, some of the problems will tell you how many trials to run and sometimes you won't have to run any trials. Sometimes I'll just be asking for a description of your process. So you need to make sure that you're reading and paying attention. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Sometimes we are gonna use just simple objects. If we have two possible outcomes, uh, then we're going to, we can flip a coin or we can uh, use a die and the even numbers will represent one thing and the odd numbers will represent something else. So there are all kinds of you know, simple objects that we can use to um, simulate a random event. Uh, something else we're going to use, we're going to use uh, random number generators. Okay, we can use our calculator, but we're in a position right now that we can't. So I'm going to show you a really easy way to do that here in just a second. Well, actually, I'll just go ahead and show you now. Um, I'm just going to open up the internet here. And as you can see, on this page, I have all I did was I typed in random number generator, and this is what comes up. So, how does this work? Well, let's say my minimum number is one, and I want to choose a random number between one and 50. So, I change this to 50, I click generate, it gives me a random number. If I need five random numbers, I'm going to do this five times. Are you with me? So that's pretty easy. All you got to do is type in random number generator and you'll get a random number generator just like that. All right. So when we are describing a simulation, we have to be specific and we have to include all of these elements. And I know it looks a little overwhelming, but once we get into some examples, it will, um, it will make more sense. 
doing this is kind of like doing proofs was in geometry. If you were in geometry pre-AP and you did proofs, you had to um, decide what was going to happen next to get you to the next step. And then you had to um, give the postulate or theorem that supported your decision. So those were kind of intuitive. Writing these is somewhat intuitive as well. But once you start doing it and get the hang of it, it will get a lot easier. So the first thing you always need to do is you always need to explain what you're including to implement your randomization. Are you using a die? Are you using a coin? A random number generator? Are you using slips of paper in a bowl, et cetera, et cetera? What are you using to simulate your randomness? The next thing you'll wanna do is talk about specifically what each of those outcomes will represent. If I'm using a coin, then I have two outcomes. What does heads represent? What does tails represent? Choosing what outcome represents what is does not have to be random, okay? The actual rolling of the die, flipping the coin, choosing the numbers, that's the random part. You can assign what those numbers represent and you can do that by choice. Okay, um, you need to mention anything that is to be ignored. So if I'm rolling a die and you know I only have five possible outcomes, I need to know that if I roll a six, it doesn't represent anything, I act like it never happened and keep rolling the die. Uh, make sure you indicate what to do if an outcome is repeated. So can I have, if I'm rolling a die, can I roll a number one two times in a row? Does it matter? So again, that will make more sense when I explain it in a specific problem. It depends on the type of problem. Generally speaking, um, repeats are okay if they represent percentages. But if a value represents a specific person or individual or item that can't be chosen twice, then repeats are not okay. So again, I will go into more detail in our examples. You have to indicate to me when the trial will stop. In other words, if I'm rolling the die to simulate some, some outcome, when do I stop rolling it? <laughs> okay, you have to tell me what that's gonna look like. And of course, you wanna make sure what results are being recorded. We wanna know what we're doing, okay? What are we simulating? Are we, uh, whatever we're simulating, what does this represent? What does that represent? We wanna talk about what our response variable would be, what we're recording, why we're doing this. So hopefully that gives you a good introdu introduction to simulations. And of course, I'm gonna work some examples and all of this stuff will make a whole lot more sense.